Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Chats with Ashley. Today I want to talk a little bit about the one thing I do when I am feeling myself enter a little bit into anxiety or a bout of depression, which happens. I am so happy that society and the media have started to talk more about the struggles with mental health and it, we're kind of removing that isolation factor. And I think when you are someone who is in a moment of struggling with um, panic attacks or depression, anxiety, isolation is the worst thing that you can do. You actually want to be able to reach out to trusted individuals. You want to be able to have people around you showing you support. You want to have some, you want to talk about it. I think when we internalize everything, we end up creating scenarios that just seem so hopeless and so unimaginable to face. And talking about it kind of snaps us out of that and brings us back to reality and makes us realize like, hey, like I can get through this. This, this isn't so bad. However, I also feel that we are kind of in a in a in a place right now in society where some individuals are over glorifying the struggle with mental health. I am a believer that whenever we are not feeling right within ourselves, we need to acknowledge it so that we can slowly um, get the right help to work through it. But I do not believe that we should label ourselves or label our identities with a diagnosis, whether medical or a self-diagnosis of anxiety or depression or any mental health um, concern or issue or diagnosis that there might be. So if you struggle with anxiety, you are someone who faces anxiety at times in your life. You are not an anxious person. This is something that you can work through and can work towards becoming better at managing or removing from your life. It is not something that you will forever live with or that you have to forever live with. And I find that sometimes we over, we have come to a place where we take, we take that, we take panic attacks or anxiety or depression and it becomes our label, it becomes our identity. And instead of trying to attain the right resources and reach out to the right help to walk us out of it, we, we choose to stay in it and we over glorify it. Um, you can agree or disagree, those are my thoughts. So I wanted to share with you the one thing that I actively do when I am feeling a little bit of, you know, something starting to creep up, which happens. That's the other thing. I honestly believe every single person on this planet will at some point of or, or another face anxiety and face depression. But to say that individuals who are walking through depression or anxiety have something wrong with them, it is to say that everyone in society has something wrong with them. This is not an isolated event. The only thing that changes from person to person is the degree of which we experience the, the symptoms. Um, I Right now, how I manage anxiety in my life is I, I catch it right at the beginning. When I was in university, I think it was my last two years of university, so four years ago, three, four years ago, I was at the other extreme where I was unable to function socially. I dreaded things like girls' night out, staying out overnight, because it meant that I was honestly going to be up all night with nausea, vomiting, and trying to be quiet, tiptoeing around the place because I wasn't managing my emotions properly. And even though in that moment I had no idea what was causing the symptoms, I couldn't stop them from happening. So honestly, like from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. were the only times of my day where I felt normal. From 6 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next morning, I dreaded nighttime. It was full of nausea, full of vomiting, full of insomnia. It was, it was unmanageable because I didn't know how to manage it. So I feel like I have experienced anxiety along the lines of a fuller spectrum. You might only be at, you know, at the very beginning of it and say, well, I'm really good at catching myself when I'm feeling a little bit of that hesitation come in. And if you're at the other end and saying, you know what, I actually need medical help because I don't know how to control this. I don't know how to manage it. And it has overtaken my life. That's okay. It is okay to seek professional help. I myself have gone to, um, to a naturopath who is also trained in mindfulness therapy changed my life. Being able to understand myself and do a lot of self-reflection absolutely changed how I manage my emotions. 
I have also attended a 12 step group for emotional recovery, which is the same steps that you would use in 12 steps for, um, for addictions and alcoholism, but you spin it so that essentially the addiction per se or the issue is how we are managing our emotions and how we're choosing to view the world and the situations around us. So two things that absolutely changed my life. There is nothing wrong with seeking professional help. Being in the healthcare field as well, I am someone who really has a lot of respect for the medical field. Um, I don't believe that you should be using medications to drown symptoms and never deal with them. I have a friend of mine who um, uses the fear of diabetes. If you're a diabetic, God can absolutely heal you. Sometimes it happens in an instant. Sometimes it's something that happens over time. And it is not to say that because you're a Christian, you can't use insulin. Sometimes you need to be on that insulin until you're able to better manage your, your health and your wellness without it or until you experience a healing from it. Some people do, some people don't. Um, and I apply the same theory to mental health. Sometimes you need medications or therapists to get you to a place where you are healthy enough yourself that you can walk away from those things and continue a road of wellness. Back to the number one thing I want to talk about. The one thing that I do when I am feeling a little bit of depression or anxiety start to creep up is I play worship music. There is so much power in playing worship music and the three things I find it does are number one, it takes your focus away from my thoughts. When we are thinking about worst case scenarios, our worst fears, situations of hopelessness, when we are so negatively focused on the worst things that can go on, it is very hard to change our attention to something else. I find that playing worship music has me thinking of melodies, has me thinking of lyrics, has me thinking of God, has me being thankful for the things in my life. The second thing that it does is it puts the power of changing a situation and controlling a situation out of my hands and into the hands of God. So suddenly I go from being like, I need to fix this, I have to fix it, I don't know how to fix it, I must find a way, to my attention is totally turned spiritually to God and being like, I can't fix this, like, I can't do it. There's no point in stressing about it. I need you. And suddenly we're asking God to enter the situations and give us the knowledge needed to address the issues as opposed to trying to do it out of our own strength. And the third thing that I find playing worship music does is it changes the spiritual atmosphere. So I am a true believer of heaven, health, angels, and demons. And I honestly believe that when you're playing worship music and there is a, a constant praise going out in your surroundings, you are changing that atmosphere. Darkness cannot stay where his light is shining. So if you are surrounding yourself with praising God, being thankful towards God, putting your attention on God, darkness can't overtake you. So by playing worship music, you are creating an atmosphere where it is about him. It is about his power, his presence, his supernatural authority. It is not about the enemy. It is not about the doubt he puts in us. It is not about the anxiety he tries to stir in us. It is not about feeling hopeless. There is hope in God. Suddenly I am reminded through worship music that he is bigger than my problems. He is greater than any situation I will ever face. He can move mountains for me. He can give me the knowledge for it. He has me. He ha I am protected by him. I am covered in his mercy. I am covered in his grace. And suddenly that hopelessness has no power because there is something so much greater that is over me, that is surrounding me, that is looking out for me. So I want to encourage you the next time or if in the present time you are feeling a bit of a bout of anxiety or hopelessness or depression or you're feeling panic start to rise up, I want you to stop and I want you to put on worship music. Um, if you look through my playlist, I do have a playlist of just worship songs. Just keep it playing. I also don't believe you have to be a Christian in order to be able to do this and see the effect of it and the power it has. Anybody can do it. And if you're someone that's like, I don't believe in a higher power, I don't believe in a God, I still wanna challenge you to give it a try. Because really all you have to lose is the anxiety and the fear that you are feeling. So why not give it a go? Well guys, thanks for sticking it out for a little bit with me. Um, feel free to leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you at the next chat with Ashley.